Hey everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences bringing you a tutorial on Falcon Pi Player. Wouldn't it be super duper cool to be able to have your laptop out in the field connect directly to a Raspberry Pi Player and play your show without having to have any type of network? That's right, I'm talking about Raspberry Pi Player plugged directly into your laptop and for them to coexist. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's look at the lay of the land. I have my MacBook Pro here. It is not on any network. I have a Raspberry Pi plugged directly into it using an Ethernet cable plugged into an Ethernet dongle plugged directly into the laptop. And normally, we'd just be able to go up under our tools, FPP connect, and connect to that bugger, right? Simple. And it's looking, oh, but it shows nothing. Why does it show nothing? Well, I can tell you that this particular Raspberry Pi is my show player. So its IP address is 192.168.1.61. And I want to leave it that way. But what if I were to take it out in the field where there was no network and still want to connect it to this device? Well, I can. But let's take a look at this network I've got going on here. So I go to my system preferences. Now on the Windows, you simply type in network in the search bar and it will get you to something that looks very similar to this. You're going to see a drop down. This says using DHCP and it's using 169.254. If you ever see these first two numbers like this, that means it's a PIPA. I learned this in class a long time ago. And what that means is there is no network. It's not really on a network. It's not really even saying anything useful uh, because it's using DHCP and there's no router sending its IP address. And that's exactly what a router does. It looks for any of these new devices on your network and it sends them out an IP address if DHCP is enabled. And on most, of, most devices, they are. Your phones, your streaming TVs, that microwave that is uh, Wi-Fi enabled, your refrigerator, all that stuff, all that fancy stuff you just had to have that you never use. Uh, yeah, those are DHCP typically and uh, your router will send them uh, IP addresses and that's sort of where they stay as long as they stay but there's no guarantee they will stay that IP address they can change if we look at the top left here you'll see here that this is that USB dongle to Ethernet connection I have it is self assigned well that's great but this doesn't really help me because I can't see my doggone pie so what you have to do at least just one time to enable a feature on the Raspberry Pi running FPP 6.x we have to do this. I'm going to change this to manually. And since I know my IP address on that Pi is 192.168.1. whatever, I'm just going to put in here 192.168.1. I don't know, 99. Sure, sounds good. Don't worry about the rest of this information. Not important right now. Apply. Now that I've done that, I can close out of this. I can go up to my tools and X lights, FPP connect, and what might we find? Bada boom, bada bang. Hey, look at that. There's my show player, 192.168.1.61. So now I can click on this and I see the beautiful world of Falcon Pi Player. Boom, there it is. So what can I do from here? Well, what I want to be able to do from here is tell my Pi Player to act as a DHCP server so that if I'm out in the field connected to my laptop with no network, it will give my laptop an IP address so that they can speak to one another with no fuss, no muss. So how do we do that? Well, naturally, we just go down here to network, and it must be hiding in there. But no, it's, it's not in there. Uh, it's set to static. And by the way, leave that alone. I know the urge is to click on DHCP. Please do not do that. Leave this alone for everything I'm about to show you. Do not change that. Okay, all right, uh, you have been warned. But I'm missing some things down here you can't see until you go to your FPP settings and you click on UI, user interface, and you change it from user level, uh, user interface level from basic to advanced. Now, when we go back to our network settings and we scroll to the bottom, we have more options. Look at this. There's my DHCP server. Enable DHCP server on selected interface. Let's do that. And you have a DHCP pool offset. So what is that? Onset for first entry in DHCP pool, which means it's going to start it at uh, 100 
and above. And then this last one is number of IP addresses in DHCP pool. So you could tell it you only want so many of those IP addresses if you want to limit it. This is so it doesn't interfere with any of your home network stuff, okay, in case you put it on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the interface. I'm going to restart the network. Okay, let's get out of this. Boom. I'm going to close out of this. Uh, it's important now that we put this laptop back into its regular state. And we do that through the system preferences and we go to our network and we want to change this from manually to DHCP. And we want to apply that. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Look what happened here. IP address 192.168.1.137. <gasps> oh, so now the Raspberry Pi has just given this laptop its very own unique IP address. Now you go in the field, your laptop's going to have an IP address that's been dished out from your Raspberry Pi player. That is impressive and so simple. And look at the router number here. Look at this, 192.168.1.61. Guess what? That is the IP address of the Pi player. So it is being a DNS server. It is being a DHCP server. It's giving your laptop everything it needs to communicate with the player. So now I can go up here, tool, FPP connect. Guess what? It is going to see 192.168.1.61. We have our very own special unique network provided by Raspberry Pi. That is super duper cool. All right. So from here, if we needed to, we could go in here and make any of our settings. We could upload from X lights to this MB1 and done. So I hope this has been helpful. If you are running in your regular show network from your home, you do not need to do any of this. Also, there is no tethering required to make this work. Please remember the first time you do this, you have to at least have some form of static IP address on your Pi. And that's as simple as connecting it to a network, any network that you can go into this and assign it the IP address, which would be static. And if you look here, you're going to see that there's really nothing in here. Uh, this, if I were to, there we go. It just takes it a moment. Uh, you'll see that the 192.168.1.137 static uh, lease, uh, what you may want to do is enable this. Okay, it's probably not a bad idea. Let me restart network. Yes. Uh, so we're going to enable that IP address. It's already associated with the MAC address, which is cool. The DHCP server is turned on. And do not, do not mess with this. Do not change this to DHCP. Do you want to know why? Because I was curious to see what would happen. I had to re-image my Raspberry Pi. And that's why this video took longer to get out. Because in order to understand stuff, you have to be able to break stuff. And I'm pretty good at that. So anyway, I hope you have found this informational and uh, helps those of you that might want to take advantage of this feature. Uh, I'm going to go now and get back to my sequencing. Uh, you guys have a great day. If you have any questions, you know how to find me. We'll see you later.